Good morning. Hi, I hope you can hear me. Someone let me know you can hear me. Hey, thanks, Fred. Excellent. Good morning and thank you for joining me. Um, while we're waiting for everybody else to join us, if you could start by letting us know uh, where you are. Um, for those of you that don't know, I'm in obviously in Australia. You can hear my accent. Um, I am in the Hunter Valley, which is a couple of hours of drive north of Sydney. Uh, it's a beautiful place to live, closer, close enough to everything, but far enough away from the big city, which is um, something I don't miss at all. Thanks for saying hi, Linda. Hey, Chicago. Uh, I'm assuming right now it's still cold and not very nice at this time of year. Um, you're still a little bit cool, although it's probably warming up right now. Austin, Dallas. Thanks, Marty. Uh, Susan from Jamaica. That's got to be beautiful all year round. Hey, Susan. Okie dokie. Steadily growing in numbers. Lafayette. CEO. Is that Colorado, Lisa? Excellent. We're getting together. Thank you. Excellent. Okay. So the numbers are growing as we speak. So I just wanted to introduce today, you know, with today's talk, I think it's really important to um, ask questions. I think that, you know, this is one of those topics where it is quite subjective. I'm going to give you my opinions and, you know, as I always do, I'll try and be as open as open and honest with my opinions and what I think you should and shouldn't be doing. But at the end of the day, the really important thing to understand is that um, everybody, every artist is different, every audience is different. So just because something works for us doesn't mean it's going to work for you. So what you need to do is try and experiment. And, you know, if something works, works for you, that's great. If something doesn't work for you, that's okay. What it means is you've learned something and then you've got to try something else new. Okay. So don't expect that you will get a one size fits all cookie cutter um, answer to every question. But that's why I encourage you to ask questions. And Alyssa's asked a really good question already. Will there be a replay? There is always a replay. So for those of you who signed up for this email, uh, for this webinar, as you all have, um, I have your email address. And within a couple of hours at the end of the webinar, I will send you links to this webinar in the Facebook group. And if you haven't already joined the Facebook group, look at the top of the chat and click on the link and go into the Facebook group and join, request to join. And once the webinar is finished, I'll add you in. Um, but we also uh, put the replays on YouTube and we share both of those links in an email. So within a couple of hours of the end of the webinar, you will receive those links. So yes, you can always watch the replay and all the replays for all of my past webinars are in the Facebook group. So if you haven't yet joined the Facebook group, now is a great time to get yourself on the list. Um, and like I said, once we finish the webinar, I'll add you to the group and then you can certainly um, have a look at the past and um, any future webinars will always be in there as well. So that's um, my standing place. Okay, so storytelling. Storytelling is the key to selling not using sales techniques. Now, I'm going to explain that in more detail. But what I mean is, as an artist, you're not just selling a product, right? You're selling a story. You're selling a little bit of yourself. And if you just focus on being the guy trying to sell something, then you're not going to succeed in selling your art. And it was one of the lessons that really, for me, was a massive eye-opener. The thing that changed my business, the thing that went from, you know, really struggling to try and make any income to making regular income and then growing the business, the switch in my brain was as simple as stop trying to sell your art and instead start telling the stories behind the art. 
right? The moment I stopped trying to be a salesman, I sold more art, right? It was literally that simple for me because once I started creating connections with people, and by storytelling, you're creating connections. And as an artist, you're creating a three-way connection. It's the connection between you, your art, and the person that you're trying to engage with, right? So storytelling is a really, really important step to selling. And in fact, I think it's the most powerful sales technique we can use. But what does storytelling mean? Now, I don't mean you sitting in front of the camera like I am today and telling a story about your art, right? If that works for you, that's awesome. Do it. But if you hate it, then that's okay. There are other ways to tell stories, and we're going to show, I'm going to show you some of those in a little while. But storytelling can be what it, whatever it needs to be for you as an artist, okay? So you can tell your story through some words, some pictures, you can tell your stories through videos, whether they're um, you standing in front of the camera or you standing behind the camera and showing the art or doing time lapses. There's so many different ways to tell the story. But the key is, and I think that this is the big difference, is instead of trying to sell people stuff, you just try and get people to fall in love with you and your work, right? And that's how you sell stuff, right? And it doesn't matter whether you're a painter, whether you're a photographer, whether you're a sculptor, you're a musician, whatever it is that your form of art is, the key is to bring people along, making them passionate about you and your art, right? And you can't avoid the you in your art. I know some artists and a lot of artists are really struggle about talking about themselves. You don't need to talk about yourself. What you need to do is talk about your connection, right? You're talking about your connection to the work. What inspired you? What were the things that came up when you created this piece? That's the thing that people want to get to know. And they, the more they get to know you, the more passionate they are about your work. They follow you more. They're more interested. They open more emails. And then they will buy, but they need to get passionate about you and your work. And, you know, there's an old adage in marketing, which is uh, before someone buys, they need to know, like, and trust you, right? And I think that that absolutely applies in um, art sales. But I actually think there's an, an additional dimension. They don't just need to know, like, and trust you. I think in a way they actually need to fall in love with you and your work. Right, and I'm not talking in a romantic sense, but I'm talking about they need to be passionate about what you do, right? They need to be excited about what you do. And when you get excited and passionate about something, you fall in love with it, right? You know, I'm passionate about travel. I'm, you know, it's the thing that drives me is travel, right? So, you know, people, when get, people get excited by these things and they get excited by your art, then they're more inclined to come on the journey with you. Right, and they're also forgiving. There might be something that you do that they don't like it, but they look at it, they look past that because they love the other things that you're doing. So it's all about finding your space and how you connect with your audience. Okay. Dave, I don't know about that, but let's talk about that after the case, mate, because this is a new system. I'm trying to learn it. Okay, so let's get back into it. So when you're storytelling, not being a salesman, that's the point where you're going to see a change in the way you sell your art, right? And the results in what you what you go. So let's just talk about this. So storytelling is connecting with your with your fans, right? Ways for you to connect with your audience and build relationships. And if you've been on one of my webinars, you've heard me say it a dozen times. And if you've been on a hundred of my webinars, then you've heard me, heard me say it a million times. Relationships, relationships, relationships is the thing that sells art. Storytelling helps you build relationships, okay? It's a tool in your bag for helping you connect more closely with your fans and the people that enjoy your art, okay? So it's about you sharing your art and connecting the story or the details behind a piece. Now, sometimes there isn't a lot of a story, 
right? But there's always a story. Now, as a landscape photographer myself, one of the great ways that I use to tell a story is I, because I'm a landscape photographer, 99% of the time I use a tripod, okay? So my camera is sitting on a tripod and I'm standing behind the camera on the tripod. Now, there are days where I pick up my phone and I take a photo of the scene, my tripod in the foreground and the, the wider landscape behind. That is an easy method for me to help tell the story about what's going on, right? About the sunrise, about the sunset, about the waterfall. You know, did I hike to the waterfall? Those sorts of things can be then included as details with that image. Now, a little um, snapshot from your phone is an absolutely beautiful piece of storytelling, right? Whether it's a progress shot, whether it's a, you know, the setting the scene like I just talked about, all of those little things, they all add up to storytelling, right? So storytelling isn't, you know, I can't emphasize this enough. It isn't you standing in front of the camera and talking about something. You don't have to do that if that's not what you're comfortable with, okay? If you're comfortable with it, that's great. Do it right? Stand there with a piece on an easel and talk about the piece and talk about what's happened and, you know, even do that as a progress as you're creating the piece, right? Um, You know, I'm going to just show you another technique in a little while with progress shots. Um, And, you know, the more that storytelling happens, the easier things are going to be for you. Okay. Like I said before, it's a three-way connection, right? You, your art, and the person who's interested in your art. It's a three-way connection. The one-way connection like, or the two-way connection just between them and the art or them and you is nice, but it's not the thing that generates the sales. It's that real intimate connection where people get you, get your art, and they want to be part of that journey, okay? And so, you know, using the stories in your social media and in your emails is really, really important. And I think that that's an important message too and – you know, when it comes to um, telling a story, running themes for a week or for a few days really helps draw that out, right? Now, um, you know, for me as a landscape photographer, I might do a theme of waterfalls for a week, right, and tell the story of my favourite waterfall, okay? And I can, I, can, I can stop. If I want to talk about my favourite waterfall, I can just stop. I close my eyes. I can hear it. I can see it. I can smell it. I can see the fish swimming underneath the waterfall. It just, it becomes a life for me. And when you tell those sorts of stories, people see their passion in you and they see the results in, in the final product. And, and, and that is, is, again, is that about that storytelling. So, you know, stretching something out over a week or longer. And, you know, it's something I'm going to talk about in a little while. When you... Um, struggle with um you know a story or you've got a story that's so huge that you can't do it justice in you know one or two facebook posts or one or two emails then spread it over a period of time and tell the story over a period of weeks because you know that's connecting people you as long as you find a way for someone who finds the story midway to go back to the start and start reading the story again from the beginning then that's great. And that's what you've got to do is, you you know, find ways to connect people to the art and to you and, 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 and bring them in with those stories over a period of time, okay? So I wanted to show you a video. Now, this is going to be interesting because I've never done this before in this new system, but we're going to have a crack right now because I believe I have it ready to go. And I think that this is the thing that I is really, really important when it comes to um, selling, is not to be this guy, right? We are not salespeople and we should never try and be salespeople. And, you know, this is a quick... Order the all-in-one ad man right now and you'll get this free set of steak knives, chop fruits and vegetables, improve your hand-eye coordination, pick food from your teeth, prove your love of Justin Bieber, and so much more. Just call 312-479-4326 or order online at allinoneadman.com. What the hell are you waiting for? Just make the call and you'll get it all. Right. Okay. So, you know, I think that that emphasized my point 
clearly enough. The point is that when we come to um, sales techniques, we don't want to be aggressive salespeople. What we need to be is great storytellers and connecting, um, connecting you with um, your art, okay? So let's have a look at what being a storyteller means for you as an artist, all right? Now, above everything else, the most important thing is to be yourself, all right? Don't try and be someone else. If you've seen an artist that's doing something really cool and you want to try that technique, that's great. Do it, but do it as yourself. Don't try and be them, okay? Because when you try and be someone else, the most important thing that you're trying to do gets lost, which is you're not genuine, right? Remember what I said. People need to know, like, and trust you. The only way they can know, like, and trust you is if you be yourself and be genuine with them, okay? So do the things that you're most comfortable with. If there's something that you um, keep hearing people tell you you must do and you hate doing it, don't do it, okay? Because it shows when you really hate doing something and people don't feel the connection, right? So if someone says you must do Facebook Lives every day, which I think is garbage, but if you keep hearing that and you are you go, okay, well, I'll be, keep getting told I must do Facebook Lives every day. So you do Facebook Lives and you hate them, right? You're uncomfortable. It's really awkward and nothing is working, right? My best advice is stop doing it. Do the things that you feel most comfortable with. Yes, absolutely, you should be using video. There's no question. But there's no reason that you have to stand in front of the camera to use video. You can use time lapses that you create on your cell phone, all right? This is the most powerful tool that you have in your arsenal for helping you build relationships with your audience. Use it as a tool, right? It shoots great photos, great videos, but also does things like time lapses and, um, you know, all sorts of things that can really help you promote your business. And I think that that's the other thing that a lot of artists struggle with. And it was one of the things that I made a conscious decision from day one. I had a vision of where I, I wanted my art business to be um, in five years, 10 years time. And number one was that it was an art business. I wanted to use my art to create, help me create a lifestyle that I wanted, right? And so when I had an art business, not just being a creator, I've always asked myself the question, is this a good decision for my business, All right? And that is my primary um, question when it comes to when I'm growing, am I doing new things, right? Is it a good decision for the business? If it's something that I need to do that maybe it wouldn't be something I choose to do for my art, but someone has offered me a great business opportunity, then I take it. Because at the end of the day, the art is a means for me to create the lifestyle that I want and the, the art is very important to me, absolutely. But I can create my own art for myself and be happy with that and still create other art for people that's going to generate the, the, the income to create the lifestyle. And I think that that's somewhere where sometimes as an artist we go, this is my art and if nobody likes it, that's fine, All right? And that's cool. You can do that. But if you want to create a business, then sometimes you need to adapt, okay? And that's what I'm saying with that. Okay, but coming back to the thing, be yourself. Do what you're most comfortable with. Don't be the salesman. That video is aggressive sales, right? And I see artists doing it. And the thing that you need to do is go back and think about it, right? So how many, how many emails do you get in a day? Personally, I get somewhere between one to 200 on a slow day, could be two or 300 on a, a really busy day. Now, the first thing I do when I go into my inbox is I skim through and I generally do it on my phone and I'll skim through and I'll go marketing email, marketing email, marketing email, marketing email, and I'll tick them all and then I'll just mark them as red and move on. And then I get my email list down to an email list that I want to look at, right? I don't want to read 200 emails in a day. I want to read 10 or 15 or 20, right? 
but I don't want to be dealing with continuous marketing emails. Now, as, as, as artists, we have to send marketing emails. There's no question. So what do you do to get people to open those emails? Firstly, treat them not as marketing subjects. Treat them as people who are interested in you and your art. Right? Treat them like a friend. And, you know, I've said this before, and I think it's one of the most important um, techniques for writing a great email to your wider audience. Now, I don't care if your email list is two people or 10,000 people. I think that this methodology works. And the methodology is really simple. When, before you start writing an email, sit down. Choose the subject of your email. So, um, you know, let's just choose that black cockatoo on the wall. That's what I'm going to write about. This isn't my work, obviously. I don't paint, right? But let's just say I was writing an email about this black cockatoo. So I'm going to sit down, think about the black cockatoo. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down and think about someone who I know who also loves black cockatoos or loves my work, right? And I'm then going to tell that person, that one person, a story. Two or three paragraphs for the majority of people that's enough information that they can read the email in one or two minutes digest it and then make a decision to read more or get into more or go and have a look at the pictures or whatever right anything more than that what people do is they go oh that's too hard and i don't know about you but i when i go through my inbox in the morning so i do that first cull i get rid of all of the junk then the next one is I go through and deal with the emails that I can deal with in 30 seconds, right? Now, you don't want to necessarily be a 30-second email, but you want to have their interest peaked enough that they'll come back to that email and read it more, click on the links, go and have a look and explore, right? That's what your, your, your goal is for an email. An individual email is not about selling. An individual email is about the larger storytelling process. Now, yes, you have times of the year where you're pushing a sale, right? You've got a big event coming on, you know, Mother's Day is coming up. That's the next big um, sales event for us as artists, Mother's Day, right? So obviously when you're running a Mother's Day sale, then the majority of your communication is going to be about that sale. But I still think it's a good opportunity to tell a story. So don't just think you have to be like that guy in the video, sale, 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 sale. I tend to tell a story and then include some information about a sale or a discount or something else that's going on. And that, I think, is it works better, right? Yes, there are times when you're going to have to go just, this is the sales information, this is the coupon, this is the discount, this is what's happening, right? But you do that for 2 3 4% of the year only. The majority of your emails that you send are really focused on telling the stories, okay? So that's where you need to be. Now, as far as big emails, if you've got a big story, Break it down into multiple emails over multiple multiple weeks. Doesn't mean that you okay. This one's got this story is so big. I need to break it into five emails. So instead of sending my regular once a week email, this week I'm going to send one every day. Don't do that, right? The routine matters and the consistency matters. So tell the story over five weeks, right? And Make sure that as you tell the story, if someone comes and re- didn't open week one or week two, opens week three and goes, oh, my God, this is really cool, right? Give them a method that they can go back and read the first two weeks, right? That's not hard. And, in fact, you know, this is one of the things that I'm going to show you in a minute when I show you some samples is people can look at um, – you can include links to past emails really easily in MailChimp. So I'll show you that in a sec, but let's just – keep moving for a second so the the lesson from this is keep the stories short easy to understand in a couple of minutes right and if it needs to be longer spread it over multiple facebook posts or multiple emails or both right there's no reason why you can't have a whole month dedicated to one subject right and focus your social media on that thing and then follow that up with a great series of emails okay 
you can theme your social posts for the week, for the months, for a few weeks on one topic. That's fine. That's really getting focused on the the process for um, you know getting people involved with your art. And when you share that storytelling and share the process along the way, people get really excited by that. And you know, this is one of the things that. Um, yeah, and the samples I'm going to show you with Natalie's work has been really, really powerful. Natalie has been really good um, at sh- taking progress shots. And we generally share or she'll share probably half of what she does in progress on Facebook. But the other half we save for that weekly email. And I'm going to show you some of those in a sec. Okay. Um, Marty, I... I've got your email, but I haven't actually looked at it. So I will do that offline because I, I really want to get into it properly and I don't know what I'm going to be looking at. So I'm going to leave that for later. But thanks for suggesting it, mate. I appreciate that. Right. So when it comes to writing an email, keep it simple, right? Think about how many emails you get in a day and how many of those you actually read, right? And what are the things that, encourage you to read an email right think about those things make some notes what things work best for you opening an email right and try some of those techniques in your emails it's really that simple now at the end of the day um what you're trying to do is find the mix that works for you right and there is absolutely no one size fits all you've got a thing find the thing that works for you and your audience right the thing that you feel comfortable doing and the thing that your audience gets excited by right and you find that space and then you can really get into storytelling and building your business because you're creating connections and the, the storytelling is all about creating and strengthening the connections between you, your art, and your and your fans and your audience and your customers, okay? So it's about creating and strengthening those connections, and that's simple, okay? So let's go. Um, okay, sorry to hear that, Crystal. The replay will be available. You'll be able to watch it in full later if, 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 you're, having, if you're having trouble. Okay, so right, let's keep moving. So I wanted to to do some samples, right? Now, I'm sure most of the people here today have heard that I run a business on a front on behalf of a friend of mine. So Natalie paints Australian wildlife. Of the three pictures you can see on the wall, the one in the middle is hers. It's a um, black cockatoo. Black cockatoos are my favourite. So I actually have three different black cockatoo pictures on that wall. I've got one here. I've got another one at the frame this right now. Um, but anyhow, Natalie paints Australian wildlife exclusively. So she paints Australian wildlife and Australian fauna in her um, art. And I run her business on her behalf. So essentially, um, she sells all of her originals through a gallery or um, as commissions. And all of her prints, calendar sales, all of those other things, I run that business myself, okay, on her behalf for her, okay? So... What I wanted to do is show you some examples of emails and these are getting average open rates for us somewhere between sort of 22, 26, 27 percent, right? But these are the storytelling emails that we've had in the last few months, okay? So this is a good one and I've got it at the bot, the wrong part, all right? So we always open the, um, the email. Now, hang on. I need to make sure I share that. Hang on. Let me just get this right. Okie doke, Chrome tab, and we're going to go to this one. All right. So you can see uh, this at the top, you've got Natalie's logo and a pencil sketch, okay, of two rents. Now, I'm hoping you can see that. Can someone just say, yes, you can see that for me, please? Yep. Okay. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate that. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, guys. So, right. So you can see that we start. I always start an image, uh, an email with an image, right? Because it helps set the story. And in this case, we started with the most basic part of the original um, story for this this artwork, the pencil sketch on on the um, background, right? Talked about what she's done. She's completed two two work or almost completed two works. Both are part of a special commission. So the special commission is Natalie has a licensing deal with a homewares 
uh, provider. So they commission her each year to paint four to six artworks and she creates those. They then get, add those to products. She sells the originals and we sell the prints. So it's a, you know, it's a good thing, but generally they'll theme around something. In this case, it's pairs of birds, okay? So this is the first one. It's a pair of wrens. You can just see the pencil sketch. But then down here, Natalie's done the progress shots, right? So she's added in the start of the leaves and the start of the berries. And these are an Australian, um, a, a, it's an Australian tree called a lily pilly. These fruits are actually edible. But then she's added in the birds and the details. And, you know, she's done these great progress shots for us. And like this isn't the finished product yet. You can see that this is quite detailed, but this is still. Um, not filled in there's still a little bit of detail to come but it, you know it's progress shots so she hasn't finished them it's just sharing that progress and there's an another pair so these are um galas they're also called a pink cockatoo the australian bird um very ubiquitous in these area we in this area we see them all the time but this is a, a, a an, again a pair and she's she's detailed the the progress and this one here is is a, a final shot um that she snapped on her um, phone. So it really, you know, that email is that you can see there's three paragraphs or four paragraphs technically, but, you know, it's a very short piece of information. I've let the images tell the story, right? And I think that this is really key is that when the images tell the story, you don't need to use a lot of words. If you use videos, then again, you can um, you let the videos do, tell a story. So let me just switch to a different tab because I've got another one where we, we've done a similar thing. So again, started with an image, right? This is a progress shot. You can see there's a lot of detail still to be, to be um, done. And this is a wombat for those of you that don't know a wombat. And this is actually a particular wombat. So um, it's, a, it's a rescue wombat from a, um, a, a rescue place slash zoo in southern Sydney. And um, Natalie saw a picture, a video of this little wombat. And then she created, she actually created this portrait as a starting point from that video. And we call this one, one well, Natalie calls this one, one little wombat, right? Now you can see here, and I think this is really, really important. This is this image has a link behind it. Now, if I click on this image, it'll pop up in another window. You won't see it, but it will open a link to Natalie's Wombat Gallery. So I'm not trying to sell, but if someone clicks on that image, it's going to take them to the Wombat Gallery. So then they can look at the other wombats in Natalie's collection, right? It's a really, really simple, easy technique to get people from your email to your website, okay? Then down here, because... This is a past work, and this portrait here, the new coloured portrait, is based on this past one, right? So I've included it, and you can see there, there's a link in the name. There's also a link in the image. I've talked about it, but I haven't tried to sell it. It's a colour version of One Little Wombat, as below. And the new piece, the finished product here, is called One Happy Little Wombat, right? Even with a typo, because I haven't closed the... Um, what do you call them? Brain freeze. But this hasn't been added to the website yet. Now, we're actually not selling this collection until they're completed because they're going to be sold as a set. So instead, this, if you click on this image, it takes you again to the Wombat Gallery in Natalie's website. Okay? And I've explained that these won't be available in the short term, but Natalie has included two really cool videos. Okay? We had a special offer. Now, you can see that I'm well into the email. And then I've always mentioned the special offer as a, as a, as a um, by the way, right? I haven't focused on the, on the special offer. The focus is on telling the story first. And then I've said, by the way, we've got a special offer. You spend 200 bucks or more on Natalie's work this week, and we'll give you at least $200 worth of free prints of our choice because they're a mystery print pack and we the mystery print packs we essentially produce for free so they cost us nothing to do um and this offer is only available for the next three buyers now i could I extend it to five or ten if i get lots of sales but at the end of the day i'm putting an urgency on it 
by saying there's only three available and it's only this week, right? So then finally, these are really important part of the storytelling is Natalie's included some videos, right? So we get an ad, sorry, but let's just skip through the ad. Here we go. So the video is just a progress time-lapse, okay? Really simple, just seeing some of the basic technique that Natalie uses. It's a really powerful tool. There's no audio, right? She's not talking. She's just set her um, cell phone up on a tripod over her shoulder while she's painting. That's all she's done. It's literally that simple. But those videos, people really, really love. And people get excited when they see those videos. So it, it is certainly an important technique in sales, right? And you can see, if we go back to here, there's actually a second video as well. So Natalie has included a second video, which we're able to share. And she's just painting in some of the fine detail. And you can see, you know, these these strokes from the fur, she does individual strokes one at a time, which is fantastic because it really shows how it works. But these videos people really love, okay? So find ways to share them. Um, okay, Judy, I'm going to come to that because I think that's a really good point and I'm going to come to your story. So I just want to get through the video, the, the emails, and I've got one more email I want to show you, okay? So I'm just going to switch tabs and right. So... This is the email we sent, not this week, but the week before. Okay. So Natalie was supposed to be doing a live show. She had an exhibition in a gallery. She does two exhibitions a year. It's really a great way for her to connect with her audience. So we'd been promoting it in the previous weeks, you know, emails, telling people about um, the fact that the show was on. Natalie had a bunch of new pieces that were all for sale. And um, Natalie was going to be there and she was going to be painting this new artwork. Unfortunately, on Thursday, Natalie was diagnosed with COVID. All right. Now, Natalie is fine. She recovered well. She didn't even really feel sick at all. Um, but there were people that were expecting her to be at the gallery that missed out on seeing her because she was in quarantine. She wasn't able to be there. So we told that story and, you know, reminded people that, you know, while she wasn't there, the work was there, you could have seen it. And um, we've made it as easy as possible for people and, you know, told that story about this work. So instead, because she wasn't able to be there live, she made a, a, a special video. Okay. And I'm going to show you that in a sec. But she actually made a video. Normally, she doesn't talk in videos, but because she was unable to be there live, she felt that she wanted to give something back. So she did a quick video, and I'm just going to start this for a second once we get through the ads. Okay. Right, so it's a really, really simple video, right? Not long, not a lot of information in there, but it's just, again, creating that connection. And I think that that connection between people and um, the art and you is so, so important. So, you know, this, is, this image here is another one, right? Natalie has a clean brush. If you look closely, that's a clean brush. It's not uh, got paint on it. It's not ready to paint. But she uses that to put herself in the image without standing in front of the camera. Natalie hates standing in front of the camera. So, you know, wherever she can, she uses techniques to share a connection between her and the art so that you can be connected as well to both Natalie and the art, right? And I think that they're really good, powerful techniques that can make a huge difference when you're trying to um, sell your work. Okay, so... Judy's raised a really important question, right? So her open rates are usually 10% or below, right? My last email was about painting of a certain wildflower and the story was about a grandmother introducing me to it when I was a child. Okay. I remember it like I was on, it was on it yesterday, right? That's a good subject line. I think that's really interesting, Judy. So what I would try is um, are you doing um, 
follow up email. So there's a technique that art storefronts teach, which is two days after you send your email, you do a follow up email. Okay. So you send the same email, but a completely different subject line and try and get people open it that didn't open it the first time. It's a really good technique. I use it every week. Okay. Um, the, the key is um, just keep it simple, right, and experiment. So my question, Judy, is how long was the email? Is it something, you know, you've got to go back and look at the emails that you've sent in the past and see which ones were opened more, right, and then look at why they were open more. Was it the subject line? Was there people clicking on things? There's a lot of information you can get out of an email in um, – MailChimp. So, you know, you need to look at that detail and see what people like and what people are reacting to. Because like I said, there's no one size fits all. Everybody's audience will react to them in different ways. So you've got to find the things that work for you and for your audience. And until you find what works for you, both you and your audience, then you might struggle with open rates. But it's not the end of the world. It's still, you've got people opening, you've got people engaging. And that's a starting point. What, what I am more concerned about than open rates is how many people are actually engaging with my emails. How many replies do I get? How many people click through to the website? Those sorts of things. Because I find those really, 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 really important. Okay. Um, so when it comes to those videos that Natalie recorded and that Natalie sent to me, she sends them to me just on, in email each week. Um, those videos are just recorded on her phone. Like I said, this thing here, this is a really, really powerful tool. Get yourself a selfie stick, right? Find a selfie stick, a cheap, cheap selfie stick. And generally a cheap selfie stick has a, um, it ha it, like obviously it's a clip to hold your phone, but they also generally have a standard tripod mount on it. So you can take it off the selfie stick and put it on a tripod, right? So a normal photographer's tripod, you can then put the photographer's tripod beside you have the camera hanging over your shoulder and what you do is set it up to record a time lapse or record a video whichever it is that you want to do but certainly um having a selfie stick on a tripod is a really easy technique to record your process and share your process in short videos if you you can um turn like an hour of you painting into a one minute video using a, a time lapse, right? So it's really easy to do. We upload all videos. Now, this is a really important thing when it comes to videos, right? If you're sharing a video on Facebook, make sure you upload the video to Facebook. Never ever share a YouTube link on Facebook, all right? If you share a YouTube link on Facebook, you're going to get 10% or 2% of the people that should see it, see it, right? Why? Because Facebook and Google, which is what YouTube is, YouTube's owned by Google, they're competitors, right? They're trying to compete in the market for your advertising dollars, right? So if you share a link to their competitor, then they're not going to show that link to more people. But if you upload that video directly to Facebook, then more people are going to see it. So what I always do, and you know, this is a technique I even use for these webinars, is every video goes gets uploaded directly to Facebook and directly to YouTube, right? Some people will find it on YouTube. Some people will find it on Facebook. Um, if I'm going to share a video in an email, I use the YouTube video, right? Because the YouTube video doesn't require you to be a member or to be signed in or anything else. Anybody can watch a YouTube video where a Facebook video, you've got to be signed into Facebook to watch a video. It's just little things that really, really make a difference. But literally just go and get a cheap selfie stick, take the head off it, screw it onto a normal tripod and put it over your, over your shoulder and you can get really good time-lapse videos and it's simple to work, simple to do. Okay. Um, no, there's no program. It's literally, Linda, it's just um, recorded on the phone in using the standard um, apps that are in the phone. Okay. Um, yeah, Marty, yes, you can use teleprompters, all sorts of things, but I really think that the, 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 the thing that works is creating a connection. And to just talk is much easier than to read, right? With these webinars, I never have more than what you see on the screen written down, okay? That's all of my notes. And the rest of the time, I'm just talking. 
because I think that that's a far more genuine way. And if I make mistakes, that's okay, right? Because I'm being me and I'm sharing my story and sharing it with you and helping you engage. The only things that I see that are written down are the, the, the questions that I see in the chat. Okay. That's the only other things that I'm looking at. Okay. So I don't think that you need for 99% of artists, you need to get anything more than your cell phone and a tripod with a selfie stick mount on the top. Okay. And it literally is that simple. Okay. Um, right. Okay. So questions. Do we have any other questions? Like at the end of the day, this is really important for you to ask questions, to engage, get the things that you're getting stuck on. You know, Linda's question earlier uh, was a, was really valid. Like, um, you know, oh, sorry, Judy's question about open rates and stuff. Like at the end of the day, what you've got to do is experiment, okay? Find something that works for you and try it. And if it doesn't work again, Try something else. And um, over time, what you will see is that some things work better than others, okay? Some emails get a far better response than others. That's okay, right? That's about you learning along the way. Now, I'm just going to open because, I, you know, I'm all for giving as much transparency as possible. So I'm going to show you. I've just logged in while we've been talking to Natalie's MailChimp account, right? So you can see this is how many subscribers we have right now, 16,594. Now, this is a really important question. I see people asking this all the time. This, this is the number of people that I'm allowed to send an email to. I can't send any emails to the difference between these two numbers. But this is the number that I get billed for. Okay, so what I want to do is make sure that I get rid of any wastage in that and I, I try and keep that lump number as close as possible to this number because this is the number I pay for, but these are the people that I can email to, okay? So looking at emails, so this follow-up email has just gone out in the last um, hour, okay? Um, so, you know, the open rate right now is only 2.9%, but that's a follow-up email. It's not the original. The original was 23%, 21%. Right, last week's follow up nine percent combined with twenty three. That's over thirty percent. That's 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 really good. Here we got thirty three percent opens. Right, so you can see we're regularly doing it around that thirty percent open rate for our two emails combined. Right, and that's the way I think it's really important is that these two these are pairs are an email. This is the original email. This is a copy of the email with a slightly different um, subject line. So if we have a quick look. Um, uh, let's open it up. You can see here, um, these are the stats for that follow-up email, okay? You know, individually, the numbers aren't great, right? But it, it, when you look at it compared to the email for the wet, the other email, they add up to, you know, 30%. 30% is good. I'm happy with 30%, right? 250 clicks, 53 clicks. These are people clicking through to the website. And, you know, just as a, a, as a reference point, I think it's important for you to just have a quick look. When you look at an email, right, you can look at an email that you've sent in the past and you can look at the things that um, worked best, right? So which email did most people click on? Look, 195 people cooked, clicked on the, on the Renz um, link. 141 people watched the video, right? 62 people looked at um, this is, that's just a general one to the website, to the complete collection. So we can see all the links there and what people clicked on, right? And, you know, the thing that I'm always a bit cautious about, and this is something that I think is really, really important for you as artists to remember, is those numbers can be something that you really get so focused on you forget the big picture, okay? Um, remember that the numbers are just an indication. What really matters is the people behind and the relationships, okay? So I, if I have one email that is a complete dud, 
but it speaks to one person and one person makes the connection, that's okay, right? I don't care if it, if, if, if it didn't get to the other 16,500 people on my email list and connect with those people. If I made a really good connection with one person from one email, then I'm happy, okay? Because this isn't something that happens overnight. And I think that this is, again, artists are really good at procrastinating but we're also really, 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 really impatient. We want stuff to happen now, right? The stuff that happens now is the grind. It's the doing it every day, every week, every month, for a year, for two years, for three years. That's how you build a business. There's no difference in building an art business to building any other business. It takes time, it takes effort, and it takes a grind every single day, being consistent, being consistent. being consistent in your effort and being persistent in not giving up, right? So take the time to do those little steps each day. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. But every time you lose, find a learning experience from that because it's the learning that's going to help you grow, okay? Really, really, really important. Okay. Jen saying my artwork is more about process and intuition. Do you have any suggestions? Jen, I think that sharing um, steps in the process, sharing time lapses, those sorts of things will make a huge difference for you if you can do, if you can help. Like I think a lot of artists are really scared to share their technique. Um, I, as a photographer, right, so, you know, everybody goes, if you've got a good photographer, a good camera, you can take a good photo, right? And honestly, I can tell you that's garbage. I used to do photography tours, take people out and do photography training. It's, that stopped since COVID and I haven't had a chance to get back to it. I may not get back to it. But I can tell you, I can get 10 people standing in a line with 10 identical cameras on 10 identical tripods point them at the same thing with exactly the same settings on that camera and we will get 10 completely different photos, okay? Now, that's using exactly the same equipment standing side by side and you get 10 completely different photos. Now, as an artist, I don't care how special your technique is, right? The more you can engage people and share that technique with you, the more powerful a connection you're going to create with your audience, right? And even if you think you're sharing your secrets, I can tell you, you can give everybody the secret sauce. You can tell them every single possible detail about how to do what you do and nobody will do it nearly as good as you, right? Because you're you. And what that's the thing that's really unique about selling art. And that's why I said right at the beginning, and I keep harping on about it, is you're not trying to create a connection between the person and the art. You're trying to create a connection between the person, the art, and you because you're intrinsically embedded into that art. So if you're embedded into that art, it doesn't matter what the technique is. It's all about you is the being the magic source or the secret source in that technique. So share as much as you can about what you do, right? Do you, um, you know, if you do something really cool, show people how you do it, right? You know, we did some videos, and that did some videos a, a little while back because um, she uses airbrushing on her backgrounds, and ha- that's how she gets the soft backgrounds, which are sort of like photos. So, but the interesting thing was, and I didn't even realize it until she showed it, is she'll draw like you saw in this email. Let me just bring this one back up. Um, just bring this up for a second. Straight off the board, straight off the drawing board. Okay. So you can see here. What she'll do is she'll firstly, she'll draw onto the background. Now, in this case, for these artworks, she's actually leaving the background white. But normally what she would do is after she's drawn that, then she'd cover everything that she's drawn with tape, okay? And then she'll go and airbrush airbrush the entire background in, and then she removes the tape. And that process, even for me, and I know art, Nat's art better than almost anybody, right? That was an eye-opener for me, and it helped create a better connection with the art, right? So sharing that technique in, that technique is really, really important, okay? 
So let me go back. I hope I answered that for you, Jen. I think the trick is to, um, you know, experiment, do the things that work for you. What do you mean by sanitize, Marty? I certainly clean up my lists, but I want to know what you're thinking about um, sanitize. Okay, Casey's asked a really, really good question. Now, um, so let me go back to sharing my screen. So here, that's the one, right. I need to share the right tab and summary report. This is the right tab. So let's go back to campaigns. So I'm looking at past campaigns. Now let me open, this is this week's email, right? So if I open the email, what I can see is this is, this is just a preview, okay? All right, you got the HTML, you got the plain text and you got the details. In the details, see here, this link, right? This link, if I click on that, it opens the new tab, right? Now that new tab is that email. So let me just quickly switch so you can see. So I've just opened that tab and let's call it six new releases, right? So this is the email, all right? So that link, I'm just sharing that URL that we just saw before. Now I can't switch between the tabs quickly enough to show you, but all I've done is share that a URL and that, that URL can be included in the copy. And you could say here, if you missed last week's email, you would like to read it. Here's the link, all right? Include the link, which is, this link, let me go back to it quickly here. So I've clicked on the campaign. I'll go back here to campaigns. Click on the name of an email. All right, click on details and that's the link here. That's the public link that's on the MailChimp website. Anybody can access that. They don't need to be signed up for your email list to read that email, All right? So that is the link that you'll share in your email. Really simple. Okay, let's keep going because we're going to run out of time and I like to be um, as prompt as I can on time. Uh, okay. So is there a better time or day to send out emails? Now, Ma Martha, I think the key with this is to be consistent. Now, for Natalie's emails, we send them at 9.45 every Monday morning. Now, I don't know whether 9.35 every Monday morning is the best possible time. But what we've done is we've tried to create a consistent time for people to get their email. And some people open them straight away. Some people open them in the evening. But the key is try and find a time that works for you, that you can do consistently, right? Because you can schedule these in advance. There's no problem. But just think, the, the, to me, the key is to do them at the same time every week or every two weeks exactly the same time all the time, right? And that's that consistency consistently um, is what you get. Um, the fake emails, Marty, okay, so you're asking about sanitizing. The fake emails generally will get sanitized by um, uh, MailChimp. MailChimp's pretty good at that. And then those emails will not, they'll just drop off. But you need to get rid of them. You need to archive any unsubs and anything that's um, junk so you don't pay for it. That's the, that's the key. Okay. Uh, create a video, upload it to YouTube first, and then share it in the email. Um, adding an email, a YouTube video to an email is really, really simple, Garcia, in, in, uh, in MailChimp. And yes, upload it to Facebook as well, all right? Use it. Um, yeah, okay. So I get a good open rate, but my click-through rate is a bit long, is a bit low. Okay, so Phil, the question is, how are you using those links, right? So, you know, if you go back to these emails that I showed you before, let me just click on one of them. Um, straight off the drawing board. This email has a bunch of links in it. Every single image has a link behind it. But you can you actually see any links? No, All right? So I don't make aggressive links when I'm trying to just tell a story. There's links behind every single one of these images. The only public link you can see there is this one, right? But people click on these links, okay? People click on these images and they get links. So I would make sure that you're including a link behind every image. Now, for instance, these artworks aren't available on the website, right? 
Not yet. But if people click on that link, it takes them. I figure if they're interested in this picture, they're interested in other Wren pictures. So they've taken to the taken them to the gallery for Wrens. Okay. Same with the galas. It takes them to the gallery that includes galas. Okay, so you use links in a stealthy way as well as an obvious way, right? And when you have to, when you're doing something, you're trying to sell something, and I think that this is really important. Let me just show you this link because I think that this is important too, right? Instead of, right, so this image has a link. This image has a link. This is the link here, also here in the text. Okay, it takes them to this link, this link, this image, and this text takes them to that particular image in the store, right? I haven't said go and buy this now. I've just said this This is the color version of One Little Wombat. I've told the story and included a link. I would test something like that and see how that goes because I think that what we try and do is we're really um, – we, we're trying to sell too much instead just try and get the um, – the um, engagement higher, okay? Okay, so Jen, if people don't understand what you do, then absolutely do more process because the more they understand, the more they'll engage. Really, really, really important. Marty, I'd like to talk to you about that offline. Let's let's have that continue that conversation afterwards. Um, London, I hope you've seen that now. If not, um, send me an email and we can have a chat. Okay, so... Jen's asked a really, really good question, and I think this is really, really important. 95% of the emails you send are just telling stories. You might include a link to try and sell something, or you might talk about a promotion, but they're really a soft sell, right? Those storytelling emails should be a maximum of one week, although I do send with every email that I send, I send a follow-up to people who did not open that email. Right. So every email that we send out on a weekly basis, there's a follow up sent to people who said uh, basically MailChimp tracks if you opened or didn't open. Those that didn't open it, they get the follow up email, trying to get them to open the second email. Right. But 99% of the time, I'm only sending one email a week. If I'm running a big sale, Black Friday sale, I might send four emails in a week. Right. And I might do that for a week and a half or two weeks. But then I stop and I get back to my regular Monday morning emails. Okay. Only when you're doing a big sale where you're trying to push really hard do you do more than that one email a week, okay? Because if you do it too often, you're going to burn your audience out and you don't want to do that, okay? Right, I'm running over time, guys. I'm going to finish up now. If you've got any more questions, you all will get an email from me in the next couple of hours and you're welcome to reply, ask any further questions. Happy to have a chat. Um, if I've missed any email, any questions, then I certainly we'll come back to those. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for joining me today. And oh, so just quickly, next webinar is um, in two weeks time. This is, um, this will be fun. All right. And Facebook and Instagram have rules. Which do you follow and which do you ignore? I think you guys will enjoy this. This is the link. If you haven't already signed up for it, sign up for it now. Um, I'd love you to love to see you in two weeks time. Thank you again. Have a great day and I will speak to you soon. Bye-bye.